Hey everybody, thanks for rejoining me on Workshop Quick Takes. Before we start, I just want to caution you, today we are working on the car's electrical system, and in particular we are working with high current connections. Automotive electrical and fuel system are two of the most effective ways to burn down your car. So if you don't have the correct balance of confidence, caution, and competence to do the job right, just use one of these. It'd be faster. With that being said, replacing your battery terminals is within the capabilities of a basic hobbyist provided you have the right tools and patience. So today we're going to try and walk through the procedure, but I am not a mechanic, so you may see me do some things that other people might recommend that you do differently. Thanks for joining us. All right, battery terminal service. This is one of those things that can easily be overlooked until one day you have trouble starting your car. Obviously batteries themselves can go bad, but the terminals can develop corrosion on them or the leads themselves can start to get into bad condition like I got here, so I'm going to have to replace these tonight. Step one, make sure you're not wearing your wedding ring or any other metal jewelry. That's good advice when working around the mechanicals of a car, but it's also good advice when working around the electricals because if you shorted that ring between two points that had a positive and negative voltage on them somehow, well, guess what? You could turn it into an instant glow plug and that would not be good for your finger. So, to start with, I've already pulled these terminals because I actually had to use vice grips to do it because the uh, condition of the bolts gotten so bad. And the reason I'm actually going to change out these terminals is these are 200,000 miles old and they've been abused heavily. Lots of corrosion on them. This one, negative one here, is actually not too bad except for the fact that the bolt's going bad and I don't want to just replace the bolt. I'd rather uh, deal with the terminal now before it gets me. And then the positive one here, it's previously had some damage on the uh, insulation here and it's starting to corrode back. So I'm actually going to cut that damage section off and then re-terminate. And what I'm going to do with those tonight is I'm going to go ahead and use a set of replacement battery terminals with the uh, compression connectors on there. Step one here that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clean the terminals as best I can using this device. This here is a multi-purpose battery terminal cleaner. Um, it has the uh, wire bristles on the inside here, and then if you need to clean down inside of a connection, it's got this wire bristle brush in there as well. You can buy these for a couple bucks. They're not expensive at all. So even if it's a device you only end up using once, there's no harm in getting one. And so what that does is that cleans the layer of surface corrosion off of the terminal and makes a nice fresh bare metal for the terminals to connect onto. Okay, that's looking like a nice clean connection there, but what I'm going to do next is go ahead and use just a little bit of a lacquer thinner to try and clean up the remaining corrosion around the edge there. You could use gasoline too or whatever, but I happen to have a can here that's almost gone that I need to use up, and it will do the trick. All right, one thing the lacquer thinner does with a lot of metals is it'll tend to form a layer of surface corrosion on whatever you use it on, so... I'm going to go ahead and do these just one more time, make sure they're good and clean. All right, next step is the felt rings. I'm going to go ahead and reuse the ones that were on here. They have a little bit of nasty on them, but not too bad, and I'm just going to flip them over, and then that way I'll have the clean side up against the terminal. Now, on post-style batteries, the positive lead is slightly larger around than the negative. It's not a lot, but the idea is that it's supposed to help keep you from accidentally swapping the terminals. On this vehicle, you'll notice the positive is short enough it can't actually reach over to the negative. But I have previously worked on one of my vehicles at a time when I was just too tired to be doing the job right, and I accidentally started to swap the leads. Thankfully, I didn't actually put the positive down on the negative. I, I always like to do a tap test just to make sure I don't get excessive sparks, because if you do, you've probably got a short circuit somewhere. A little bit of sparking is going to happen as devices in the car recharge. At that time, I got a lot of sparks, and all I can figure is that I was saved by the current going through the alternator diodes, and so thankfully I didn't blow up any electrics in the car, but I sure could have. So, let's start by reconditioning the negative here. You'll notice I've also detached the body ground lead while I'm here. I've got a couple fresh grounds from some electrical work I want to reconnect. This is also a good time just to inspect this, make sure it's still in halfway decent condition, and it appears to be. I'm going to go ahead, though, while I'm here, and use the terminal brush to clean that. Now, if I was reusing these terminals, I would use this to clean inside here. You can see all that dust <laughs> coming off of there. That's corrosion and bits of stuff coming out of there. But in this case, I'm just going to do this. Be careful with these wire bristles. They can tear into your finger, of course. And something else I noticed about the body ground over here is, interestingly, the paint has not been uh, properly prepped around where the ring terminal does. I mean, obviously, you've got this giant bolt over here holding it add this giant bolt. Had a battery terminal cleaner. 
Maybe I should invest in a portable workbench, but I haven't gotten around to that yet. So yeah, this bolt down in here. So, you know, it's worked up to this point. I assume it's going to work still, although if I really wanted to be thorough, I could take a screwdriver. There. That's not strictly required, but it'll uh, just ensure a good connection when the new ring and the additional rings get compressed back on there. Okay, so next step, since I'm not reusing these, I'm going to do a couple things here. Let's go ahead and prep the replacement terminals here. I've got my positive and I've got my negative. I'm gonna start with the negative first. Here's the point of no return. I have made the cut. I have made the second cut. Now, if I really wanted to, this would also be a good time to do a uh, wiring upgrade because this is, uh, I think, eight gauge and I could go to like four and help lower the overall resistance slightly. I'm not quite ready to do that tonight. And with the modification I'm making here, I can easily do that at a future time by simply compressing new wire into these terminals or using these screw points as terminals. Even though these are pretty new and clean, I'm gonna go ahead and just scuff this up in here as well to make sure that these are ready to go. So now I've got to uh, strip these wires that I've just cut off here. And I don't have an eight gauge stripper, so what I'm gonna do is just use the largest one on here and just gently go in a circle around the wire like that until I see the insulation pulling loose like that. And notice I'm really still not even a clean wire yet there. There's a fair bit of corrosion back in there. But I also don't wanna keep shortening this too much because I don't have a lot of spare lead to play with here. But let me try going just a little bit further back and see what happens. Okay, that's looking a little better. So I'm gonna take out the lacquer thinner again and just see if I can knock any of that corrosion off of the wire or if it's gone too deep. And actually, that's not looking bad at all. I should be able to get a good clean termination out of that. So let's see lengthwise, how does that do? On this particular type, notice that I have captive hex bolts. Be careful not to over extend this or you'll have to drop them and have to go chase them under the vehicle. So, you know what? That there's looking like just about the right length. Got lucky, I guess. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to this one here. And since I know that that's a good length, I'm going to use that as my guide. And actually, you know what? This one here is eight gauge. This one here might be six. I might still convert that to a number four because that's the main block ground. And of course that has to handle all the return current, including the uh, alternator. And you don't want to get too aggressive doing this because if you do, you can start to break a whole lot of wires in here. And that one also has a lot of a corrosion that's crawled back up in it. But once again, let me just take my cleaner. And that one's actually, that one's pretty clean too. So I think we'll be good there. Okay, so I've got that one just a little bit too long. And this is where I want to be careful because if I have a whole bunch of little copper filings going down in the engine bay, who knows where they'll end up. Now my next step is going to be to compress both of those wires in this sleeve area here. And the reason I'm doing this rather than getting a pre-terminated wire is that it's hard to get a pre-terminated wire that actually has two wires this heavy. So you end up usually having to custom fab it. All right, now we're going to start messing with grease. Now I'm going to show you the hack way of doing this. Ideally, you should buy a tube of dielectric grease in order to do what I'm about to do next. And in my case, I'm just going to use a little bit of red lithium grease. As long as you don't overdo it and you compress your terminals correctly, it will help protect them from corrosion without uh, insulating the wire. So I'm just gonna do a real nice thin coat like that. Nothing elaborate. Put just a little bit of a grease here on the tip of this. And likewise, a little bit here in my ground lead. So now I'm gonna need to compress these inside here. The large one I want down in the groove channel here because this is handling the most return current. And body ground, I have to decide if it's actually going to fit in there. This isn't the most ideal thing ever, but let's give it a shot. Now, I believe that's a 10 millimeter bolt on top there. I'm mistaken, I think that's an 11. I don't know whose cute idea it was to use 11 on a lot of battery terminals because 11 is not a common size in most wrench and socket kits, especially wrench kits. But in any case, I do happen to have one here. It's a part of the trick to make this work out correctly. 
going to be making sure I chase the wires into that groove as I compress. I don't want them floating out or running around. Another trick to do here to make this work right is to alternate sides when you have two bolts like this so that you're not compressing one all the way down and then splaying the wires over to the other end. Okay, we're starting to get a little tension on it. That's good. Okay, definitely starting to get some tension now, and I'm starting to see just a tiny bit of bowing on that top plate there, so I think we're going to get a good, nice, firm connection here. Okay, it's almost getting too tight to go any further, so before I finish that job, now that I know I have a nice, solid connection, I'm going to go ahead and reconnect my negative here. And the way I'm going to do this is, once again, I'm going to use just a small amount of the grease, coat the inside of this here, and coat my battery post. And again, remember, we're not trying to ice a cake, we're just trying to get a film on here. And if a thin film like this is all you ever use to ice a cake, then I don't want you opening a bakery. I don't think you understand frosting. Now I have to decide which side do I want my screw terminals on. And I'm thinking, I'm not sure that it matters, but let me see how my positive and negative are done. Are they both the same direction? They are. Guess it doesn't make a huge difference. I'll go ahead and leave this one on the body side. And I'm just going to turn that terminal because I need to get the extra slack here that I just lost by stripping out the wire there. So let me guess, is that still an 11 on this side too? Nope, we're at a 12 now. Thirteen. Fourteen it is. Wait a minute, that doesn't feel like a 14. Oh, uh, okay, this is a 12 and a 14. There's no 13 on here, so that probably is a 13, and I'm going to have to go fetch one if I want this to work out. Off to fetch a 13. Alright, I'm back. I got my 13. We also got a channel ox. So I'll show you in a second what we're going to do with that. And there we go. Funny how they use all the odd sizes on these things. Now keep in mind when you're torquing them down on a battery post, you want to avoid over torquing it like this, 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 or this so that you don't actually break the connection in there. I mean, they're fairly stout, but why tease it? That there's not going anywhere. So the next thing I want to do is finish tightening these down. So I believe we're back to the 10 on those. No, that was the 12. 11. That was the 11. All right. Here's where I'm going to use the channel locks. Now, since I'm working on the negative terminal, and the negative terminal would normally be the body ground anyway, I don't need to be too cautious. But if I'm over here doing this on the plus one, and I hit this right here, then guess what? Sparks everywhere and probably a huge plasma cut nick inside my wrench. And that's if I'm lucky, otherwise I might even get worse. But what I'm gonna go ahead and use the channel locks for is I'm gonna go ahead and hold that there so that I'm not twisting the terminal excessively while I'm trying to tighten these. Well, I think that's about as tight as those need to go. I've got a really firm connection. It shouldn't have any trouble carrying current. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take my 10 and I'm going to try and reattach my uh, body ground here along with a couple additional terminals that I want to add on to it. So the body ground is a really heavy, rigid stud, so I'm going to go ahead and put that first because it'll take the torque of the bolt a lot more effectively than these other terminals that are being used for these two auxiliaries. We got purchase on the screw threads there, so before I go any further with that, I'm going to do the same thing with the grease again. I'm just going to apply a little bit in there and around that connection so that once it's down nice and tight, it should compress out any excess, make a good connection, but also be somewhat resistant to corrosion. Okay, that bolt was torqued pretty hard when I got here, so I think that's probably good right there. So that looks good. I've got my main body ground. I've got my two auxiliary grounds going to my new electrical box uh, therein. So, next step is going to be to finish up the positive terminal. 
Okay, we're back to the same procedure. This is going to be a little bit more fidgety because as soon as this touches, I've got a completed path again. So, cut the first. And I already know I have damage on there, so I'm going to cut this back just a short distance. Get a pretty good look at just how grody that thing is. It's distorted. It's been dented. I mean, that's a pretty nasty battery terminal. Okay, so this one going over here is fine. It's this one here going to the alternator. Now I'll have just enough lead length on it, but I'm, it's going to be tight. So I don't want to take off any more of this than I have to. And again, keep in mind, if my metal tool touches that while I'm touching that, I've completed an engine circuit. So I don't want to do that until I'm actually ready to do a final test here. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. If I had a little bit more spare lead length to work with, I might cut it back another, I don't know, half inch or so, but I'm not feeling comfortable with that at the moment. I'd rather this vehicle not get stalled while I have to replace that entire cable. And then I've got my auxiliary cable going over to here to the electrical box. Yeah, shouldn't be any problems at all with that one. Just double checking the leaf on that. That might not go all the way back. Yeah, I guess we're okay. Once again, I'm gonna start pre-greasing our connections. This one's definitely going to be more, more fidgety. I could actually disconnect the minus again. And you know what? I'm not feeling lucky, so I think I will. In any case, I verified that that's all connected and ready to go, so I think we're fine there. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and see what it's going to take to get these two shoved in here. And this is going to be trickier, because I think both of these are maybe 6 gauge. Those are staying in a nice little tight bundle there, so that makes me happy. Alrighty. I think I just greased up my uh, jacket there off the battery terminal. Okay. Okay, once more with the 13. All right, now just like I did on the negative before, first of all, I'm going to set that out of the way. I'm going to hold this in place with the channel locks and finish this. Okay. Until I actually get the uh, impetus to do a battery wire upgrade, I think that'll be enough. Oopsie. Did you see what I just did there? That could have gone bad. First check, I got both my positive wires on my positive terminal of the battery. I got both my negative wires on the negative terminal of the battery. So unless there's a serious fault in my new wiring over here to this electric box where I just connected those two new grounds, and I don't think so because they were loose in there and nothing was happening, this should be ready to go. Now, the more modern a car is, the more electrical accessories it has that will recharge when you reconnect the battery. So you can expect some sparks, but you shouldn't get a big shower. And so that's what I'm gonna do here is just test tap. We're good. Okay, so if all went well, we should be back to normal operating condition. Just need to do a test start and then we're good. Dome lights back on, so that's a good sign. Well, that sounded nice and healthy when it turned over, so I think we're in good shape. Hey everybody, thanks for joining me again on Workshop Quick Takes. Hopefully that helps you out, and if not, maybe you were entertained at least. We'll see you next time. Has anyone seen my phone?